Est-ce que vous m'entendez bien Oh, mais on est beaucoup, on est 8. <rire> Alors, je vois pas vos messages. Alors, est-ce que... Bon, vous me voyez bien dans le bon sens. Et... Vous m'entendez Moi, je vous lis pas pour l'instant. On va voir, est-ce que ça, c'est des messages Certains messages, nanana, oui, c'est un message. Bon, ah, bon, on est tous sept. <rire> Bonsoir, Catherine. Je sais pas si tu pourras faire des sketchs. Comment va la météo à Newcastle Comment vont les magpies Hello, Nathalie. Bonsoir. We are 16. Double the numbers. <laughs> Hello, Ilak. Hey, Mary. How are you, Mary? You know, terrible things arrive. Last time, Mary was with me. Hello, Donna. Was with me in Paris. We had, I hope, a nice visit. And we went to the... Uh, uh, I can say Mary or not, I can't say, tell me if I can't say, I don't say anything, okay? Can, can, I, can I explain what's happened or if you don't want, I don't say. I keep it secret. All right, nothing, nothing, uh, nothing uh, incorrect, I just... Uh, So strange because the, on my phone your message arrived arrived doubled so I can't read perfectly what you said anyway so I have got two uh, video from home two live streaming from home this one which is about Mona Lisa and another one next week yeah I can't read your message that's very what's happening I mean I can't read it because it's instead of moving up it's just all stick together and uh, so they are stick together so I can't read them and they arrive that's very strange how what's happening you do you have Patrick do you have my son no I've got my daughter Camille which is supposed to arrive in a couple of seconds or you may see at the end of the tour someone someone sounds issue uh, if you've got a sound issue i can put my uh, i can put my airpod if you prefer if you think it's better you tell me if you think it's better good to see you too is it better with the airpod It's very difficult because instead of hello Donna fine gosh it's terrible it's uh, all your message arrives stuck one to one so you see uh, it's like if it's a uh, hieroglyphic <laughs> I just see you write but I can't see because your the last message is stuck on the one before it's terrible terrible better so I keep the I keep the I keep the I keep that. Camille, tu veux venir? Ben, si tu veux dire bonjour parce que je commence. Si tu veux voir la présentation, if she wants to see my fabulous live, she has to come now. Parce qu'après je vais tourner la caméra dans l'autre sens. She's arriving. You know, we have to say because she got a degree to be a lawyer. Here she comes. She's going to sit next to me. Hello. Hey, hey here she is. <laughs> well, you have to go down. No, you have to go up, up, no, that way, that way, that way. Oh, yes, here she is. 
but there's something wrong. In fact, instead of uh, the message, they arrive stuck on one. You see, I can't read the message. I can't. You see, the message are. It's very strange. Anyway, so that's her. Very proud of her because now she's going to have got a long black dress with a white tie, with a little hat, and she's going to protect me from all the bad things can happen. You know. Mm. <laughs> So, my friends, we are going to start the, the tour, okay? But sorry for the message, it's really... Uh, T'as vu, c'est bizarre, hein? And I don't, know, I don't know what to do with that, because if I go to the message, uh, the message don't... Non, là, regarde, là, là, tu vois, on voit pas, on voit bonsoir, euh, mais on voit pas les Mary Breastfold, Mary... Je vois Mary, mais il y a quelque chose qui est, qui est collé à Mary. Okay, anyway. Let's start, okay? So I'm going to turn the gimbal and you are going to see it on my TV. Yes, I know, it's fabulous. So let's turn it up. TV is here. So I hope you can see you can see correctly. Uh, let me put it up a little bit. Here it is, okay? Like that, you've got a big screen, which is the TV. So all good for you. We can start. Five, four, five, four, <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> Let's start. <laughs> so today we are going to speak about Mona Lisa or La Joconde in French. And of course, a quick word about Leonardo da Vinci. So who is Leonardo da Vinci? Okay, so that's him. In fact, we could speak about Leonardo da Vinci for a long time, but I'm not going to speak such a long time about him. I'm going to give you just a couple of facts and then we're going to pass to what we are here for tonight. It means La Joconde. So that Vinci is born in Vinci. That's why his name Leonardo da Vinci, that the city where he born in Italy. He born the 14th of April, 1452. And he's the natural child, so it means he's not uh, recognized uh, by his father, who is a low man. And uh, his mother is a peasant. And he's going to study uh, to, the, to, the, to the, an art school, uh, the, uh, the workshop of Andrea del Verrocchio, and his friends from school, you know, not bad, Botticelli, Le Perugin, Gerlandaio, well, quite a famous name from the painter from the, from the Renaissance. And then he's going to go to Milano to see the Sforza uh, people in, in Milano. And uh, he's going to go from Milano to Venice, to Florence, and he's going to have got a long life. And of course, he's going to finish his life the 2nd of May, 1519, in France, in Amboise. That's where he's going to die. So a long life. Of course, he's a painter, but he's not only a painter. You know, we could speak about... The fact that he's an inventor, this is a tank, well, machine to, uh, to make military. He also invented, you know, uh, the helicopter. The first uh, drawing of an helicopter, it's him. But of course, we, he's a painter and he's getting very famous with that painting, The Last Supper. And of course, he's a mathematician and he likes studying about the anatomia with the man from Vitruve. So we could speak a lot about Da Vinci. We could speak a long time about all his work, but we're going to speak about his masterpiece, the one that is worldwide famous. It means Mona Lisa. But who is Mona Lisa? That's a good point. Who is she? That's it, Mona Lisa. That's the Mona Lisa we know. Lots of people don't know who she is. So I propose we just make a little discovery of that. So she born, let me zoom on it. She born from a man named Anton Maria di Noldo Gerardini. He's a boogies and he's quite healthy living uh, in Florence. Her mother is Lucrezia del Caccia. And two of them are going to get the baby. Yes, the baby is arriving. It's a girl because it's pink. And the baby is going to be born June the 15th, 1479. And the baby is going to be Mona Lisa. 
Yes, but at that time, it's just a baby. But already when she's 15 years old, she's going to marry a man named Francesco della Giocondo. Francesco della Giocondo. And he's a merchant uh, who is quite a healthy merchant who is selling fabrics in Italy. 15 years old, but you know, she's going to be a good productive mother because she's going to get two plus two plus two, six kids. At the time, she's going to be painted as Mona Lisa. She made six kids, but unfortunately, it's not going to be a nice thing because four of them are going to die being young. Only two are surviving. And we know her life, so we know who she is, we know who she married, we know all her kids, and we even know, or we assume, when she died. We are not completely sure about that. She may have died in 1542, or she may have died in 1551. But anyway, she was over 63 years old when she died, or maybe 71, which is a very old for uh, I mean, long time to live for this uh, for this period. So what I propose is we speak about the painting. Okay, what joined Mona Lisa on Leonardo da Vinci in fifteen o three, fifteen o six. We are not completely sure when he started the painting from when he was just at the sketch of Mona Lisa. So in between these three years, he started painting Mona Lisa. Okay, and you see here a painting of Leonardo in his workshop, who is painting Mona Lisa. And we don't know who made that painting. That's quite interesting. You know, we have no idea who made that painting, but that painting has been made. And uh, it's a quite a rare painting to see and to have uh, Leonardo or painting. You see here, look, when you look at here, you see he's, he's doing the, 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 the sketch of Mona Lisa like Catherine is doing. and uh, But you see here, it's on canvas, and it's not going to be a canvas because it's going to be a wood poplar. So it's just, a, if I can say, a first um, a first, uh, first row stuff to do it. So I propose we discover Mona Lisa and the painting through the eyes of Mona Lisa. So now a little short video. I give you some sounds for that. Here we go, if it works. Let's go through the eyes of Mona Lisa, through the eyes of the master, and we arrive in 2023, and we see Mona Lisa exhibited in the Louvre Museum. That's what you see when you arrive to the Louvre. Well, in fact, that's what you dream to see when you arrive to the Louvre, because normally it's so crowded that you have to fight for a couple of minutes before approaching Mona Lisa. <laughs> so what is the origin of the myth? Why Mona Lisa is like that? So let's start the origin of the myth. We are in Florence, Italy, in the 16th century, in the early 16th century. At that time, Leonardo da Vinci is 48 years old, and he's really at the top of his career. He just finished painting the famous Last Supper, and he also did some sculpting. This is the famous Last Supper. Leonardo is going to bring and to have a new way of painting the history that nobody did before him. And he's going to create one of his masterpiece, so not John Baptist, not since Anna 
with the virgin and the baby, but of course, Mona Lisa. He's completely passionate by this painting. It's going to be here. Uh, it's going to be for him so important. So in Florence, he's going to meet the young girl, Lisa Gerardini, that you in American or in England or other English speaking country, you name Mona Lisa. And he's going to be obsessed by her. She's the wife, as I said, of the wealthy fabric merchant, Francesco della Giocondo. And he's going to paint her when she's around 23 years old, 25, depends when you put the first datation. She's considered to be such a beautiful lady, you know, uh, at that time. And Leonardo is completely, mm, how do you say, uh, gosh, mem not memorize, um, he's uh, hypnotized, if I can say, <laughs> uh, by, uh, by Mona Lisa. So why Mona Lisa is so unique? What makes Mona Lisa so unique? Because it's a living portrait. What you have to understand, is at the Italian Renaissance, we are painting, I mean, the Italian painters, the friends of that Da Vinci, are painting from side. You see, Mona Lisa is front of you. But at that time, this is not the way of painting. You see, at that time, the painters paint from the side. On all the painters that you can see from that time, they look a little bit dead. When I'm in the Louvre, I show to my guest the painting of Botticelli. And the guy looks so dead. You see, that's the way the Italian paint from side. And they don't have any interaction with you. Of course, they are great painting. They are fabulous painting from master. But, you see, you don't feel being connecting to the painting. See, Gerard Landio was his, that Vinci met when he was at school. And that Vinci is going to completely change this idea. He's going to look at the Dutch painter. And the Dutch painter don't paint from side, but they paint from three quarter. And you see, they have got a really striking presence. You really feel them. You can get the emotion. So the three quarter position is giving a much more natural position. And even if he doesn't look at you, you feel his presence, you see? All this painter from Von Eyck or the painter from that time, from the Dutch painter from the Renaissance, you see they are very different from the one we saw. And also the Dutch painter, they use the background. It means they are going to put their painting opening on a background, which also change the painting. And they are also going to use the hand. When in the Italian Renaissance painting, we don't see the hand. And the hand are going to be important because they are going to give you some details. So first, you try to interact with the painting. You see, he looks at us. <laughs> he looks at us. She was looking at us. So there's a connection. It's like if he wants to speak to us. And as I said, the hand, look, you see, he's holding a ring. And so you have got this double connection by the eyes and by the hand. You see, he's holding a coin. What does it mean? It means maybe he's a banker. Maybe he's rich. Maybe he's going to buy something. He has got a ring. Maybe he's going to be engaged. Or he's going to engage his daughter. And that Leonardo is going to go further to create the life illusion, the illusion of life. He's going to use a technique that is going to be named the sfumato. But before that, he's going to paint Mona Lisa real size. Real size, when all the portraits at the Renaissance were shrink. But Mona Lisa is not going to be shrink. You see, she is nearly 80 centimeters high, which is his hair real high. When you compare 
to the portrait from the Renaissance, you can see here that she is huge. He's going to put the hand like the Dutch painter. Exactly. It looks like if she's in movement and the eye which looking at us. And you see, wherever you are, when you are in the Louvre and you look at Mona Lisa, you look from side, she's always looking at you. And the smile, so rare to see a smile. I always say to my, to my guests in the Louvre, find, find more than three paintings which are smiling, you won't find them. So she's really, alive and to reinforce this idea of being alive leonardo da vinci is going to use that technique of sumato uh, that i will explain you later which consider to put layers of, of painting mona lisa is so important in the louvre that every year she's going to have got an annual health examination so what is the annual health examination of Mona Lisa in the Louvre? Quite simple. We're going to use different techniques to check how is the painting and to see if we need to do some renovation. First things we are going to use as a technique is we are going to check the wood poplar because you know the painting is not on a canvas not on plaster but on a wood poplar support and we have to see how the wood poplar support is living for that we're going to use the x-ray so we take out the painting and we check the wood poplar and we see if there is any crack any damage and you can see here you see here there is a crack so we are going to identify that crack and we're going to be able to fill it. We're going to be able to mend it. Ah, does it work? Yes, it works. You also can see here some white little spots. This is the residue of the primer coat that Da Vinci put. Then after that, we're going to use the infrared light to come to the prepary drawing that that she made to be able to check that if there is no anything necessary to be mended so this is the drawing that he did before the painting that the ultra red reveal to the eyes of uh, the the art people from the Louvre to decide if they have to do something or not on the painting. And of course, we also examine within naked eyes to see the paint itself. And that we can see here, the famous sfumato technique that I said before. What is a sfumato? It's to make the painting alive. For that, he's going to surimpose thin layers of oil that contain a little pigment so doing that by a graduation of this technique you are going to have slowly sh from shadow to light so it means it's going to be a little bit blurry at the edge and you see like that exactly what your eyes see so you see the, the painters at the Renaissance, when you were looking, they were looking a little bit dead, but Mona Lisa looks so alive. That technique is the sfumato. And all the artists after Da Vinci are going to use this sfumato technique. And finally, we use UV to see if there is any trouble with the glaze that we put. And we can see here, you see the spots which are arriving, plume, 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 all that is the alteration made by the glazing. Okay. But Mona Lisa, she's also an obsession for all the other artists. She has been copied, but never surpassed. Look at that. 
you may be you may feel strange but look at that all the other artists are going to use the position of mona lisa to create their own mona lisa this is a painting of Raphael, and you see he really looks like mona lisa this is a painting of Corot's Benoit Corot's he's going to use again the same position this is a painting of Madame Valoton Françoise Valoton this is a painting of Ingres you see all of them are going to try to find a solution to try to recreate it but as they can't do that they are going to destroy Mona Lisa to recreate from Mona Lisa a kind of a new painting completely different look Dali with his Mona Lisa or Marcel Duchamp with Mona Lisa with a mustache and when he said L-H-O-O-Q L-H-O-O-Q meaning she has got her the how can I say that she's hot <laughs> Or here, you see Pablo Picasso, who is doing his own Mona Lisa. And here, the Japanese painter Fukuda, another Mona Lisa. Or here, you see, from the uh, Dutch painter uh, Rausenberger, who is also recreating a Mona Lisa. And of course, Andy Warhol, who is going to do his own Mona Lisa by using the real Mona Lisa. So as they can't surpass Mona Lisa, they are going to reuse Mona Lisa and change it to their own interest. But even if they all do that, nobody does better than Leonardo da Vinci. So Mona Lisa has become one of the world's most famous work. But so why Mona Lisa became so famous she has been exhibited in the louvre museum since 1793 she is in france since the beginning of the 1500s since the beginning of the 16th century because leonardo sold it if i can say to francis the first the king of france so why from that time, when she started being exhibited in the Louvre, she suddenly became so worldwide famous in 1930. It's because she has been stolen. Oh, let's speak about that stolen. But still. 21st August 1911, the frame is empty. Mona Lisa is not anymore in the Louvre. And Mona Lisa, which was famous, if I can say, in the in the art lovers, but you know, in the Midwest, in America, in the center of Russia, in uh, somewhere in Africa or somewhere in Australia, Mona Lisa may be not that famous. Even people never heard about it. But suddenly, Mona Lisa is stolen. So all the newspaper in France, in Belgium, in Canada, in America, all over the world, to say Mona Lisa has been stolen. And it's going to be like a series on Netflix. Everybody wants to know what's happened because it's going to take a very long time. So we have got a lot of suspicion. Some people said, it's Pablo Picasso who stole it. He was jealous. He made that Mona Lisa, you know, like an abstract Mona Lisa. He's, he's jealous. He stole it. So people say, no, that's stupid. It's Henry the Forge who stole it, you know, because he, he, he was criticizing Mona Lisa. So it must be him who stole it. Some people say, no, that's completely stupid. It's Guillaume Apollinaire because he said that he would stole one day Mona Lisa. So it must be him who did it. No, that's stupid. Some people say, oh, it must be just a simple Italian guy who did it, you know just like that or maybe it's Otto Rosenberg who is very famous as a burglar mm -hmm. and even though the most famous of, of all the burglars the most famous of all the thieves Arsène Lupin 
must be Lupin who stole Mona Lisa. But finally, the truth is going to happen and Mona Lisa is going to come back to the Louvre and we are going to know who stole it. Yes, the Italian man Perugia. So how did he do that? Let's have a little video on it. 6.30 a.m. in Paris. That day Perugia, who is a young Italian worker who was working in the Louvre, is going to enter to the Louvre. He's going to enter by the, the door of the workers, of the people who work in the Louvre. The guards say, hi, hello, Vincente, how are you? And Vincente is going to cross the Louvre. The Louvre is still empty. It's not open. Only people which are working inside are allowed to be there. And he may pass and he arrives to the gallery where Mona Lisa is exhibit. He look Mona Lisa on the wall. It's the Salon Carré. No guards, nobody there. He's just going to take out the frame of Mona Lisa from the wall. Pock, pock, pock. There is no alarm. He put down the painting. He's going to take out the wood poplar from the frame. And he's going to leave by a side door that he's going to break. And he just leave the frame in the corridor. So he did only forced one door to leave the Louvre. And he go out from the Louvre. And that took him 25 minutes and nobody saw it. But when they opened the Louvre, they realized that Mona Lisa was stolen. And as I said, from all over the world, people are going to speak about it and people are going to seek for Mona Lisa. Who did it? Who is the burglar? Okay. That's why it's going to become a war. And where is the Mona Lisa? It's in the room of Vincenzo Perugia, who lives in a little chambers close by the Louvre. So in fact, Mona Lisa is just there. And for two years, three months and two days, he's going to keep it in his bedroom. You see, more than two years. 1911, we arrive in 1913. And then he decides at that time, to go back to Italy. So he takes the train and he goes from Paris to Florence in Italy. And he takes Mona Lisa with him. Nobody cares about him. Nobody thinks it could be that insignificant random person. He arrived to his hotel in Florence and he's going to call two art dealers, the Gary's, the Gary's brother, and tell them, I've got Mona Lisa. They doubt about him, of course, but suddenly he's going to open the painting and they realize it's Mona Lisa, for true. They are so, you know, so in incredible, incredible. It's not possible. And when they realize it, they call the police. And the police is going to come to his hotel and he's going to be arrested. Blam! Mona Lisa has been found back in Florence. Two years, two months, three days. But it's not going to come back soon to Paris. The Italian are going to use it a little bit. So they're going to exhibit it in Florence. And then it's going to be exhibited in Rome. And finally, it's going to come back to France. Go back by train and arrive back in France, where Mona Lisa is going to arrive by the Gare de Lyon and then go to the Louvre Museum where she's going to be put back. And as soon as that, she is a worldwide star, the Beyonce of nowadays. Perugia is not going to have got a long sentence, a large sentence, only one year of jail, okay? Because he didn't serve uh, well. And you know, funny thing, he's going to open a painting shop <laughs> in Paris. He come back and he sell painting. <laughs> that's quite funny. So that's why Mona Lisa is becoming so famous. Then after that, Mona Lisa, of course, when you are famous, you have also a lot of haters. 
So there is a lot of fake news about Mona Lisa. And I want to break these fake news. First fake news, Mona Lisa is a copy. Ooh, no, my friends, this is not a copy. When you go to the Louvre, you see the original. And well, I can not prove it myself, but I really believe that the people of the Louvre tell us the truth. So the Mona Lisa you see every day in the Louvre is a real one. Believe me, she's well protected. There is a lot of guards and there is a glass in front of Mona Lisa. So like that, if anybody tried to make something stupid, which has been done last year, somebody tried to send to Mona Lisa a pie. And uh, so he threw the pie to Mona Lisa. The pies arrived on the glass protection and nothing happened to Mona Lisa. The guy has been arrested and Mona Lisa is safe. So it's not a copy. Some people said, well, she's an unknown person. No, she's not unknown. Well, you know so much about her now because I told you her life. So Mona Lisa is a very famous person. She, I mean famous. She's a real person and she was a, a, a real lady. We know she's not unknown. Some people said Mona Lisa is a man. No. The people who said that, it's because, you know, Leonardo da Vinci was obviously bisexual, which is most of the, which is the case of most of the painter at that time, Michelangelo, uh, Le Perugin, uh, Raffaello, all of them were homosexual or bisexual. So some people said, oh, it must be one of the little boy which were around Leonardo da Vinci that he painted like a woman. No, 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 it's false. It's, she's not a, ma a man, she's a real lady, and we know who she is. Some people say Mona Lisa is a canvas. This is absolutely false. Mona Lisa is not a canvas. Mona Lisa, it's a wood poplar support. Some people say also Mona Lisa hides a mystery. Yes, I do agree with that. But the only mystery that Mona Lisa hides it's a smile. That's the only mystery. There is nothing else a part of the smile. The smile is interesting, you know. At that time, people which were portrayed were not smiling. Because if you are smiling, you are not serious. And when you want a portrait of yourself, it's to be looked serious. And second point, the people were not smiling, opening the mouth. Mona Lisa is smiling but with her mouth closed because, because, because the teeth of the people were very rotten. So you were not showing your teeth. <laughs> That's why first no smile. And even if you smile, not very, uh, not a large smile. People said Mona Lisa followers by hell when she looked at us. Well, it's true or not true. The eyes are not moving, but with the sfumato technique that Da Vinci used, she looks like if she was following us, but she doesn't do it really. Ah, I like that one. Maybe if you received and if you read my newsletter from the last month, you have got the whole history about that Mona Lisa. She is named the Mona Lisa of Isleworth. Isleworth is a, is a district in London. First, she has been bought in 1778 by a family called the Montagu. And later on, she has been bought in 1930 by a man named Blacker. And his son-in-law, John, here, he's going to try to prove that she is the real Mona Lisa. And he said that painting has been painted 10 years earlier. And for that, he said this is true. Because the painter, uh, not the painter, the historian Vasari, who had also made the biography of Leonardo da Vinci, said that da Vinci painted Mona Lisa, a Mona Lisa 10 years earlier. But that's not true. Okay? Uh, so they paid millions to try to find evidence to prove that she has been painted before. And that's a real da Vinci. Now she has been bought by Henry Pulitzer, which is an art collector. And he's going to take 20 years of his life to, to try to prove that. But so far, no proof. And even though 
what is very strange. That painting, which is ex exhibited these days in, to in Torino in Italy, it's a canvas. Or Da Vinci was never painting on canvas, but was painting on wood poplar. And secondly, there is no sfumato. When Da Vinci was using the sfumato, that one don't have it. She doesn't look as alive and real as Mona Lisa. So, all the art historians say she is not a Da Vinci. But of course, the owners of that painting wants that she be a Da Vinci because you can imagine the value of the painting is quite different if it's from an unknown painter or if she is a Da Vinci. Another fake news is that Mona Lisa is so small. This is completely false. Of course, when you arrive to the Louvre, and when you see Mona Lisa standing alone on, on her wall, you see, oh, she's so small. But when you compare her with the other painting from that time, you say, oh, she's so big because she's real size. When the other painting were never real size. So in fact, she is not small. And I want to finish my presentation by another point, because even if she has got many haters, she also has got many lovers, and I am one of them. And this is not a fact, okay? So I precise. All what I said before are fact. They are proved. This is not a fact. It's a rumor. But I like having sometimes some rumors to tell you. And this is a rumor of love. So what is that rumor of love? Look at the hand of Mona Lisa. This is the hand of Monica. Oh, very, very beautiful hand. What is missing? This is a question. You can reply to me if I can read your text, which is not sure. But what is missing? Look carefully the hand. And there is a detail. Oh, so I just try. Uh, I see bonjour. Oh, gosh, I can't read what you say. That's so pity. I don't know why. It was working well, and now it's not working well. Uh, so I can't, sorry, I, I can't read. I see you replying me, uh, but I can't read. So I'm going to tell you the reply. And maybe some of you have got the good reply, but unfortunately, I can't read it. So what is missing? Lisa Gerardini, when she was 15, she got married to Francesco della Giocondo. So the thing which is missing is the engagement ring. There is no engagement ring. Or she's married for around 10 years. She must have got an engagement ring. So all the artists turned said, if she has no engagement ring, it's not because that Vinci was blind, not because that Vinci was a little bit, uh, I don't know, thinking of something else, not because that Vinci is not a good painter, but because Da Vinci didn't want to put the engagement ring. And why he doesn't want to put the engagement ring? The rumor is because he was in love and he wanted to keep her available <laughs> for somebody else. So no engagement ring. Second thing, Francesco della Giocondo commissioned Da Vinci for the painting, okay? He said, I want you to paint my wife and I will pay you for that. But, but, not for sale. <laughs> I mean, Da Vinci, when Francesco came to uh, pay and to get the painting, Da Vinci said, sorry, but I am, it's not for sale. You know, Da Vinci sold all his painting, all his work, he sold it to make money, to live, to live. But Mona Lisa, he never sold it. He wanted to keep it. Like if he wanted to keep Mona Lisa with him. And when he's going to travel from Florence, here, uh, where is my finger? Here, <laughs> from Florence to Amboise, where the King Francois I is waiting him, and he gives him a castle over there, Le Clos du Stay. Okay, when he's going to travel from Florence to Amboise, he's going to travel with Mona Lisa. He's going to bring 
in Paris, I mean, not in Paris, in Amboise, in France, he's going to bring Mona Lisa. He never be anywhere without her. And we say Mona Lisa has been painted in 1503-1506, but till 1519, Da Vinci is going to add some little details on Mona Lisa. It means it's like an unfinished painting. So, in fact, this is the last painting that Da Vinci did. It's not because it has been started, it's not the last painting he started, but he never finished it. You know, till his last breath, he was making a little change, like if he never wanted the story finished, like if he wanted to keep this love story and this, you know, uh, yes, this love story in between them alive. Ah, and so to finish, you know, I felt like being an artist. So I did for you my Mona Lisa. Oh, I know I'm not as good as Catherine, but this is my Mona Lisa. Amore by Patrick Herb. Okay, so you can take a pictures of it. You can print it. You can put at home and you will have got an exclusive painting from Patrick. Isn't it fabulous? You like it, I hope? Mm, a bit trendy. <laughs> but, uh, anyway, if Warhol, Picasso or all the other one make copy it, why not? <laughs> so my friends, I hope you enjoyed uh, this tour and that you have got a, a good uh, vision about Mona Lisa. So never forget, you can leave me a review by flashing the QR code or by uh, going to the link because, uh, that you see here, which is written over there. So you can leave a review there. You also can find on that link uh, the way to give some donation by PayPal or by, uh, by Meal Coffee. So do not hesitate. It's always most appreciated. And next week, we will have another tour. And that tour will be from home and we will make croque monsieur. And we will make a croque monsieur with ham, but we will make also a vegan croque monsieur because my daughter Camille, she is veggie. So she will be there to help me to make the croque monsieur. So I turn back the camera to me. Well, it doesn't help for the for the for the message. I thought it was going to change for the message, but it doesn't change for the message. So my friends, I can't read what you are telling me. It's just awful. On my screen, I should make a screenshot. You will see all your message arrive completely uh, one above the other one. Instead of being online, there are only one line on all the message arrive here. So it means they are all mixed. But I see some hearts. That's very nice. And I see wonderful lecture. Thank you. That I could read it. <laughs> well, anyway, it's good, you know. In fact, I just can read the compliment. <laughs> so, my dear friends, I hope you did enjoy this tour about Mona Lisa. And I hope you enjoy the time.